Hello everyone! <laughs> I almost fell over my chair just then. I think I need a bigger school or a bigger desk to get my big old butt behind here. Grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. And like I always tell you, don't believe everything you hear. Check your facts and do your own research. Welcome to Find Out What's in Palenta's Forest. And as soon as the butterflies bring us on in, I think we're going to get started. <laughs> Don't you want to know what my butterflies are saying? What? <laughs> what? Don't you want to know what my butterflies are talking? This is... I don't know what else to say. <laughs> when, you, when you come in the door backwards, it just throws you all off. I feel like I need to start all over. I think I will. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Find Out What's in Palinta's Forest. Grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea. And spend the next few minutes with me. Don't believe everything you hear. Check your facts. Do your own research. I think I covered everything. Hey, now I'm gonna move on with some news. Hey, move on with some news. <laughs> Well, that was well scripted, wasn't it? And then look at, look at my big freaking wings here. I just about yanked this and blah, everything's gone everywhere. <sighs> anyway, how are you? How are you doing? You hanging in there? How's life treating you? Well, I hope life is treating you well. I really mean that when I say it. And look it. I got this little teeny tiny desk and it's a mess. And a hip hop, a hip to the hip of the hip hip. I'm just all over the place this evening, aren't I? Okay, well let's see here. What do I want to start with? Actually, I want to start talking some smack. <laughs> but I'm going to save it to the end of the show because I have some funny things to tell you. But I want to get right to... Let's see. Okay, you know how I like to talk about all the science and the new everything, everything. So anyway, the last episode, I don't even know what it was. Maybe it was 36. I talked about how the coral reefs help with cancer medicines. Well, check this out. Study offers hope for a blood test to detect cancer treatment. So this is absolutely amazing. If you hear that boom boop, ignore it. It's July. Do you know the people where I live, people are still doing fireworks? I guess it's just 4th of July the whole doggone month. But anyway, um, the biggest study to date on new blood tests to detect and analyze cancerous tumors concluded that such liquid biopsies are a reliable alternative to conventional biopsies, um, offering a potentially cheaper and less invasive way of monitoring mal malignancies. So this is groundbreaking because you know cancer is a nasty nasty bug and I think I was talking to you a couple of weeks ago about uh, you know Angelina Jolie had the cancer gene and she um, you know had her breast removed and did some nipple reconstruction and things like that and then doctors were saying don't do that because it's just it's just not smart but see the bad thing is cancer is not racist or prejudice okay cancer is not as ignorant as a lot of the people in the world today unfortunately it's not well actually there's it's just it's unfortunate all the way around because um you can get brain cancer toe cancer stomach cancer throat cancer tongue cancer 
all over the place. I mean, I feel like I'm doing a Forrest Gump movie. You got Bubba Gum soup, Bubba Gum shrimp, Bubba Gum fried, it's stewed, it's this and that. But I mean, cancer is nasty and ugly. And as soon as you think that you have it beat, it pops up somewhere else. You know, it's just, um, it's just ridiculous. So this study um, offers hope for blood tests to detect and treat cancer way, way, way earlier. And they're actually um, doing some of this at UC Davis. So this is a very interesting article. And if you actually want to look the article up at Sacramento Bee online, it is in Sunday, June 5th. Uh, newspaper article of 2016 so it's very interesting go ahead and read it look it up if you like and also let's see here um, you remember when that Egypt uh, Egypt airline went down the French ship is still missing in the Mediterranean well this article says that the black box signals have been detected from the missing Egypt air jet so listen to this. It says a French ship searching the Mediterranean has detected black box signals from a missing Egypt air flight in the waters between the Greek island of Crete and the Egyptian coast. A development that could help solve the mystery of why the air aircraft crashed into the sea last month, killing all 66 people on board. Now, you know... I heard a rumor that there was actually a fire on the plane, and that's why it went down. You know, one thing about when tragedy strikes, when they tell the news, they usually have it backwards from the jump, all right? Because when you listen to all the different news stations, I'm not knocking the news people. I'm sure everybody does a good job. Kudos. But you listen closely and everybody is saying something different and as time goes by you keep hearing more and more and more different things are added to the story now you hear that there is a fire on the plane so it's like what well, how do they know that i mean have they heard that in the you know in the in the in the black box or whatever so it says also too in the two weeks since the flight you know 804 had disappeared from radar en route to cairo from paris only small pieces of debris and human remains have been retrieved from the crash site no terrorist group has claimed responsibility though egypt's civil aviation minister sharif Fathias said that terrorism is a more likely cause than equipment failure. Well, you know, it's obvious that we do have a problem with terrorists, people like blowing themselves up and just killing innocent people. But like I said about the conspiracy thing, sometimes awful things really do just happen. It's awful. So I would love some more information about what they find in this black box and how the plane or the air jet actually went down and crashed in the whole nine yards. That, I mean, I think everybody wants to know what happened because over the last couple of years, these planes haven't been flying over the Bermuda Triangle. They're just falling out of the sky and disappearing. And then remember the other plane? I forget it. I don't know. Was it 293? Don't quote me. Don't believe everything you hear. Check your facts. But that, that one plane, they still haven't found it. You know, still haven't found it. So let's see, what else? Here is some cool news too. The first train speeds out of the tunnel's north portal on the opening day of Gothard Rail Tunnel near Ersfeld, Switzerland. So listen at this, this is really cool. Now the Swiss just finished the world's longest rail tunnel on time and on budget. This is so cool. The two bores through the Gothard Massive that includes the 8,200 foot Piz Vatgira on the way to Italy. Wow. You know, <laughs> I can't say it enough. We are moving into the future. The future. You know, I had an appointment the other day 
just to get a just to get a teeth cleaning and the lady says to me well you know plenty I need to take your blood pressure so since the last time I've been there I, you know I put my arm out and everything and and she says no you know give me your wrist and I'm going what so I put my wrist out and she puts this little thing on my wrist like a wristwatch and it took my blood pressure and my pulse and everything and I was sitting there going what in the world is this remember back in the day when you had the uh, the regular mercury thermometer and then you had the little forehead th and you had the now they just take this little pen and just go zip and they have your temperature I mean it's just it's just it's just unbelievable but anyway getting back to this train oh dang it see I want you to see <laughs> look it I am so organized on this episode but maybe you might be able to see that train I don't know but um, but it looks pretty cool and of course it uh, let's see it goes super fast I didn't read the whole article yet so I don't know how fast it goes but that sucker apparently can move so um, go ahead and check that out but let me see how much it it cost I just saw it oh yeah so it took <laughs> okay listen to this I'm getting hot right now because of what I'm getting ready to say now listen it says European dignitaries inaugurated the 35.4 mile Gothard railway tunnel a major engineering achievement deep under the Alps snow caped peaks it took 17 years to build at a cost of oh my goodness 12 billion dollars 12 billion dollars 12 billion dollars do you hear me you know what you know I, I'm always talking about all this money and where all of our money is going I have finally come to the realization that what happens is it's a monopoly game when we need when they need money for this stuff they have this little machine you know how we have the little snow cone machines back in the day they just run it through the little money machine and just make the money and just slide that money on because that's just crazy the last 30 episodes of this show I have discussed probably 500 billion dollars of cash where our money has gone out to something and you know what you know what the funny thing about it is all that money now one time has that money gone to feeding the hungry buying somebody a house buying somebody some clothes fixing somebody's car it's always to some outer space satellite you know some hyperloop some other crazy ridiculous thing it's not anything that's helping the people it's not fixing any streets any roads it's always some off the wall outer space something it's just ridiculous okay moving right along to the next story here now listen to this Sacramento's pot tax pot such a naughty word <laughs> Sacramento's pot tax falls short at the polls measure why why don't we have marijuana all the time measure Y would have imposed a 5% tax on commercial marijuana cultivation 65% of voters supported the initiative to direct pot revenue to youth programs now first of all I would like to know who were the 65% of them voters that support the initiative and are they closet pot smokers hey don't get mad at me I'm just asking an honest question okay and then it says the backer looks for new licensing tax plan after measure fails to net two-thirds of the majority 
Oh, bummer. I guess you better go to Colorado because they got the green cross all over the place. <laughs> but anyway, check this out. The last thing I'm going to say on this subject is, you know, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. It has never been proven that marijuana has done any kind of significant damage to anybody. Okay? I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. People that smoke pot have three things on their mind. Sex, food, or sleep. That's it. They're not thinking about blowing up buildings, murdering people, and doing all kinds of heinous, crazy crimes. People don't think that way. And the people that are using it for medicinal purposes, they're thinking about that crap even less. So this is my thing. I think if the whole entire world would just gather up all their weed and just sit down, get, get a whole bunch of ice and a whole bunch of tea and a whole bunch of weed and a whole bunch of food and we all just sit in a circle and just get lit and just laugh and tell some funny stories and hug each other and just get high and just be funny and go to sleep and wake up the next day and do it all over again. You know what? The world would be a much happier place. Seriously, people, now I'm being serious. Is it so bad to be happy? Really, think about it. Is it such a bad thing to be nice to somebody? Why the heck does it matter what color you are? Why does it matter? Why does it matter if you're Jewish or gay or straight or Chinese? Who cares? Can't we just like come together and just get the hell along for a change? I mean, it's, it's, it's coming down to a point where you're being brainwashed into thinking that being happy and being nice is a bad thing. Being a nice, pleasant person is not a bad thing, you guys. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't let what's happening in this world right now turn you into a mean and nasty person. Just please don't do it. Please don't do it. You know, and like I said in my other video, you know, just go out into the world, take your emotional butter bath, say a kind word to somebody, make their day. You know, say something nice, do something nice. If you don't have money to contribute, well, you know what? When you smile at somebody, that's a contribution. Listen to somebody's woes. Give somebody some positive advice. But don't let what is happening in the world destroy the goodness that's inside of you. I'm begging you, please don't. Don't let all this stuff change because we bleed the same. We're born the same. We've got to stick together. We are a family, okay? Black, white, Chinese, Mexican, just Jewish, gay, lesbian, whatever. We are each other's people, and we need to start acting like it. Man, that's my plea from me to you. And you guys have watched my show long enough to get a feel for me and to know where I'm coming from and where my heart is. My heart is in the right place, and I know that yours is too. So anyway, moving along, I like to show some cool pictures. This one here I thought was really beautiful. It says, above San Blas. Look, at, I can't pronounce nothing right. I need to go back to school and learn how to speak proper English. <laughs> I think my tongue piercing is giving me a little bit of a list, people. But this says, above San Blas Islands in Panama. And this photo is by Clay Taft of Fair Oaks. And behind the lens, he says, my son and I sailed through the San Blas Islands of Panama on a kite boarding adventure in January. This is an early morning kite session launching from one of the unnamed islands. This picture is beautiful. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. That's absolutely beautiful. You know, one of my goals is to upgrade my little studio here and I really want to get one of those projectors 
so I can do a better job of showing you guys pictures because I am homemade all the way here. And the last one I'm going to show you is, this is a Lincoln Road um, debuted something, international acclaimed in Miami. It's a parking structure, but it looks really cool. And uh, it's, 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 how do I say it? It's not quite pitch dark outside. It's a little like it dusk. But this is a real pretty picture. You know, I didn't know it was a parking garage until just now because I didn't read it. <laughs> I thought it was somebody's mansion or a damn house or something. <laughs> I was thinking, like, who lives there? So anyway, look at this, people. That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I like that. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that will be our show tonight. <laughs> so as usual, I am so very grateful, very grateful for everything. And I am grateful for you too. Thank you for watching. Many more episodes to come. Go to my website angels passing through by my book and you can follow me on facebook instagram and you can also follow me on twitter and if you dare you can follow me <laughs> thank you for watching god bless you all and have a fabulous fabulous evening and enjoy your life. You deserve it. Good night. <laughs>